I was the one who failed AFK twice. So I know how horrible it is when we are in that position, when we got our NECC results and it, it shows you failed. It's hard to believe and it's frustrating because we don't know where, did, where are we missing out. Like I was a dentist in another country. How come I cannot be a good enough dentist for you? So I understand the frustration of so many foreign trained dentists about NDECC and the biggest one is around situational judgment exam. Why wouldn't you give us a clear answer or clear rubric? Why is it so subjective? So many questions are on the social media posts, on the Facebook post. Let's try to answer those. So this video is good for anyone who's trying to prepare for NDECC situational judgment exam in your first or second attempt. And my frustration with AFK was, um, like I was a general dentist in India, why are you assessing me on such difficult, such stupid questions, which feel like they should be for a master's in prosthodontics or master's in oral surgery person, while you are assessing me as a general dentist. Like I felt there was a big disconnect and that disconnect was not between the exam and its requirement. It was between my understanding of this exam and my perception about it. So today I want to talk about how we can change our perception to improve our result, improve our performance for these NDEB exams. Stay tuned. And yeah, ye NDECC ko unjust bolke, NDEB process ko bureaucratic bolke. We are just discrediting all other people who actually uh, cleared this process. I know NDCC as well as all other NDB exams are very frustrating, very bureaucratic, but they are not unjust. They are not being partial um, between you and someone else. They are not silly because they are organized by a group of uh, dentists who are running, governing the foreign trained dentist regulations in Canada. So let's just not be so negative about all of that and let's try to learn something so that we improve our journey in Canada as a foreign trained dentist. And another common comment I read on Facebook is why are they making this process difficult on purpose as if they are trying to take some kind of revenge from you. One question I always tell myself is, is this thing difficult or is it different? Difficult or different mein baut farak hota hai. Like driving a car in Canada is different from in India, from how it is in India. And that's why it's difficult. It's not like it's made difficult to drive a car here. Similarly, there these exams are different. Our our learning objectives, how we want to learn and how we want to present our information is different from what we learned back in our home country. So it's different. That's why it's difficult. Nobody's trying to make it difficult on purpose. Just driving by this uh, public library where I spent hours and hours preparing for this AFK exam. <laughs> I hate that time. And this is the QE2 hospital where we do our rotations in dentistry. This is my drive on the University Avenue off to Dalhousie Dentistry Building. I don't often drive, I usually take bus or bike, but uh, since I'm driving, I got a chance to make this video to help my friends giving situational judgment exam and to talk about uh, how we do stuff at Dalhousie Dentistry. So right here, Dalhousie University School of Dentistry, my place, my home for last three years. I just cannot wait to finish. This is last three months left here, but I think I enjoyed it. Just park the car. It's a nice, beautiful morning. Little bit of snow all around. And I know in my vlogs and everything, I show that DDS life is so cool. And uh, those especially who are trying to go through direct licensing and going through all the hardship, they feel like uh, we got it an easy way. I just want to tell you, no, we are learning the same thing. It's just that in university, it's more organized, more structured and assessment based. But you guys are learning it by giving all these exams, NDECC, situation judgment, clinical skills, as well as AF ACG, AFT exams. So every morning I walk in my regular clothes like this. And we change into scrubs, grab our bag and off we go. And I get this bag. This bag has my face shield right here. It says my name. So that's my face shield. Then I have, that's just a patient's model. And I have my loops right here. 
These are my loops from the Johnny North Vision. I just carry battery and chargers here. And uh, that's a blood pressure machine right here. And that's my Tapodont, just in case I want to practice a little bit more. Like this one is a veneer prep that I did at school. And right here, that's my only prep. And once we put our white jacket on, then this is the sign of professionalism. From here, all the boundaries of professionalism start. And while I have some time in the clinic block, let me show you my situational judgment course in details. So if you go on this website, samtstc.thinkific.com, this will straight take you to the situational judgment exam course. And uh, this is a wonderful course, multiple options in the front page. You can see this uh, promo video, which will give you orientation, all overview of the course. And uh, you will have a dashboard on the side. You can see there's my name there. So you will have your own login. And once you get in the course, there are multiple options available for you to choose from. The mock exams are heart of this entire course because that's where I give you one-on-one -on -one feedback. But the entire online course is given in an asynchronous way in five to six sections, patient centered care uh, practice information management and professionalism communication collaboration is in two parts because that's the most important one so many people failed in just this section let me show you right here in our clinic we have all this paperwork available and we have to memorize all these forms everything which is written on these papers we have to kind of memorize when we present it to our patients so this is paperwork is always a formality but what we have to remember is how we how the entire process of communicating a treatment with the patient goes on how do you treatment plan something so this is a paper version we use the computer version but this is how we plan treatment in a proper sequence so that there is no misunderstanding between the patient between lab between any external stakeholders we also need to know all the post-operative instructions all the uh, informed consent format how to obtain informed consent on something we just do not give them this paper and ask them to sign it rather we go over each and every step involved in it this is an endodiagnosis one which i have also included in the course how do we diagnose endodontic condition and how do we explain all those things to our patient that why are we doing all this this one is an implant consent form so again there are so many complications in implant there is so many complications with the immediate denture if you do not convey all these things properly to the patient then there would be misunderstandings there would be lack of professionalism in your entire presentation so that's what the situational judgment exam is assessing us on again this is rpd design form but that's what the situational judgment exam is assessing us on how do we communicate with our patients so anyone who thinks all of this is not important it's more bureaucratic it's more paperwork what is the use of all this you are wrong there is a lot of applications a lot of ethical as well as medical legal considerations behind all of these kind of paperworks here that i have covered in my course so that's just a glimpse of this third section which is communication and collaboration it's like 60 lessons five and a half hours so definitely there's a lot more covered in this course there also rpd design lab prescriptions I can show you details of each section such as this is for the first one patient-centered care we will go in detail over treatment planning sequence and developing the entire treatment plan we'll talk about practice information management and professionalism record keeping and uh, like I've, i have included rcdso videos and many other external resources here which you might want to refer before this exam and uh, then communication collaboration is definitely two section worth because it's the biggest one and that's where most of the students are struggling right now next is rpd design lab prescriptions i have I went overboard and I also created lab prescriptions for ortho and fixed processes so that nothing is missed out in this course. Health promotion, caries diagnosis, caries risk assessment is the most important in one exam. There were actually three uh, questions from caries risk assessment. So that's how important it is. And uh, smoking cessation is also very, very important one. And lastly, we will go over the mock and mock is brutal. So I do the simulations and throughout the mocks. So 10 questions in each mock, total 30 questions in three mocks and all other extra information will be given. So you will cover everything. And that's why over 100 students have trusted our course. And so many students have passed this course so far. Everybody has passed this course. 
uh, who has given who has taken the mock so i think i'm super confident about this course and you must join it now during the simulation or interview type station when you have the task in your hand just read it carefully take your time to make notes create a treatment plan if it's required or just just analyze the entire situation before you jump onto the patient now when you are speaking with the patient make sure that they are in the level of your eyes so bring them up uh, different times they have different type of scenario right so have a nice communication start by asking how was your day does anything hurt you and uh, is there any problem that you are uh, here with or how can i help you today and let them speak up let them try to answer a few things before you jump on your treatment plan and your recommendations so communications become the most important factor in the situational judgment exam and that's where most of uh, foreign trained dentists are kind of struggling kind of failing this exam right now i have a lot of students who did pass this exam but failed in the other part and from them the only thing i learned is they had a good practice about communication skills and in the mock sessions if you join this course that's what i do i i i go on bug you on every single thing that you probably accidentally said incorrectly or there would have been a better way to say that communication means uh, not just trying to give a treatment plan to the patient but also understanding patient's values patient's needs what kind of uh, thing patient would like to do financially socially aesthetically as well as ethically so there's a lot involved to that whole thing and just make sure that uh, whenever you are planning a treatment uh the sequence is important but more than that the informed consent is uh is that's the most important part actually and informed consent is not just uh, would you like to go for a crown or would you like extraction informed consent is uh, giving patient the message of everything involved in that treatment uh if they choose to or not choose to go for that treatment what would be the future what would be the sequel of that extraction or that crown uh does it mean that after putting the crown everything is nice and tidy or do they have to come back for maintenance is there any problem between a natural tooth and a crown tooth or like there is so much involved to it so communication is not just giving that certain finding and treatment for that it is more and more about communic and patient centered care so that's what we will try to learn in this course patient centered care communication and collaboration and if you still need more information then I'll join this course on situation judgment exam i'm offering this course in collaboration with dstc at this time and uh, it's, it's a beautiful course there are like more than 5 and a half hours of lecture uh, lots of resources as well as mock sessions and three mock sessions 30 questions i'll try to cover everything that they can possibly ask in this and ec situation the judgment exam so i'm i'm getting a lot of great feedback and uh, you can ask around too i would highly discourage you to jump on this exam without joining a course it's not just going there somewhere and answering the questions it's about it's completely about changing your perspective uh, perspective about dentistry in canada so i hope you join the course i'll see you in the mock session so that's all from this video i uh, hope you enjoyed this video so as a quick summary um situation judgment exam there are a lot of right ways to answer a question whether it's a situational question like interview based or a uh, simulation based or if it's writing question like creating a treatment plan or um rpd designing or anything skills risk assessment long story short there are many ways to give a correct answer in this exam but there will be only a few ways how you can mark an incorrect or answer it incorrectly and that's what we have to work on during our mock sessions that how to avoid making any mistakes so that you answer a question in a wrong way which will make the invigilator the person who is assessing you think twice at oh is this guy ready to practice or not so it's not subjective there is a rubric it is pretty clear rubric if you give the same answer to me probably i'll say the same thing that no it is not an acceptable answer you might want to work more on your communication skills with your patients so trust me i know it sounds unfair but there is a uh, many right ways to answer the questions but only a few ways to answer it incorrectly and that's what i'll teach you in this course during my mock sessions so check out the link in the description below uh, i'm not worried if you join the course or not but i wish you all the best for your situation judgment exam i just started this video today and i'm ending it today and see how much snow it just got deposited on the roads and as well as on the cars in these a uh, few hours so yeah welcome to canada see i told you this will be different 
that's why you will find it difficult but this is a beautiful country and i hope you have a beautiful career in dentistry here so i'll see you on the other side bye for now